Hello everybody, and welcome back to yet another video. So you can literally see my reflection in this iPad, but we're outside today since it's such a beautiful day, I decided to film my video outside. So today's video is basically going to be based on a viewer request. So one of my viewers asked me if it's possible to download to iOS 5 on an iPad 2. Well, it is, but it kind of isn't. You're kind of downgrading, but you're actually dual booting. So you're basically sharing the storage on your iPad 2 with another OS. And a better iPad 2 to use than the one I just got from my uncle. It's currently running iOS 8.4.1. So I'm going to be showing you guys how to dual boot it to iOS 5.1.1. But there's some prerequisites. Firstly, you have to be jailbroken. So you have to download Etazon JB from... The, from the website for Etazen JB, or from jailbreaks.app, or you can go to Can I Jailbreak, which is basically by the same person who runs IPSW downloads, and you can down, and then it'll take you to the website where you can download and sideload the IPA with Sideloadly. Once you're in the jailbreak, it'll install Cydia. Then you'll go. You have to install the repo Coolbooter.com. So once you get Coolbooter.com installed, you have to select version 1.4 of Coolbooter. That'll, that's what makes it work best. So once that's downloaded, you'll open the Cool Booter app on your iPad. So it's basically gonna. So you can just select install, and then they recommend going to 5.1.1. So you'll click I'm ready. So I'd rather not use a custom boot logo. And I'm just gonna let's Lubox boot because why not? Let's not jailbreak. So we're gonna be so the, we're literally gonna be downloading iOS 5 right from Apple. So this is one of my viewer request videos because the other viewer request I have is if it's possible to downgrade to iOS 14 on an iPhone 6s Plus. Unfortunately, I do not have a 6s Plus, but I have an iPod Touch 7, which is very close to a 6s Plus. So that'll be my next video because you can do that via the new downgrade tool, SCP.lol or Turtis Marula, which you, utilizes the Blackbird exploit to let you down to let you install fi iOS 14. Or you can even go back to 13. But for the sake of the video, that'll be coming up soon. I'll be doing a downgrade to iOS 14. So we'll be done it after that. And I'll see you guys once it's ready. Then once it's done downloading the IPSW, it'll need to verify it. This usually takes a little while, but it'll go through pretty quickly. It basically verifies it with the Apple server so it's fit to install on this device. Like, if you try to do this on an iPhone 5, it wouldn't work. This only works on, like, the, I believe, the iPad 2, iPad 3. I'm not sure. I know, like, the iPad 1's Mac OS is iOS 5. So now it's going to be extracting the firmware. So that, that's basically the next step in it. So again, the, so again, you can see literally my reflection in this. I'm using an external mic connected to my phone, the Apple headphone mic, because you'd be hearing a lot of background noises like leaf blowers and lawnmowers because the people in my neighborhood decide, are deciding to do a lot of outdoor work today. And it, because why not? It's a really nice day to do it. And we did a lot of like weeding of the garden. So that, that's good, we got some yard work done today. So I'll see you guys once we're ready to boot into the OS. So then once it's done extracting the firmware, it's basically gonna be partitioning it. So now we're basically, in, basically, welcome to my garden, we're now partitioning the OS. And it's gonna basically gonna be allocating half of the space for our guest OS, iOS 5, while the other half of the space will be allocated for the host OS, iOS 8. However, if you if you don't really want to use Cool Booter and get rid of the partition once you're done, you can easily just do a, a factory reset slash restore in iTunes afterward. So then it's gonna be preparing the OS for its first boot. Then once it's done, you'll be ready to boot into iOS 5. And it's basically stock iOS 5. Nothing's gonna be changed about it, like like any like strange limitations, it's gonna be like you're experiencing the joys of 2011 all over again. And by the way, again, this also works with the iPhone 4s. Any chip, any device with an A A5 chip, except for the iPad Mini 2 and iPod Touch 5, will work perfectly with Cool Booter for iOS 5. So well, the install finally finished. It's been a while since I last did the install because, well, I was at the magical paradise known as Home Depot, and I got a couple clips. So let's roll the clips of the Home Depot adventure.
Welcome to the beautiful land that I would like to call the Home Depot. All of this was shot on the iPhone 5S, by the way, where you'll be able to find things inside this store, such as these beautiful Home Depot shopping bags. They're quite interesting and a good old home bucket, basically what they call the Home Depot buckets. And guess what? That's so clever. Oh, look at all those carts. And mainly what we did was we were shopping for all these plants. They look really nice. And guess what? I planted some of them in a garden I had out back. And they literally had plants of all different sizes. That's the magic of the Home Depot. And they even had like really big plants such as, what do you even call this grass? It's so tall. It just, it's called a spikes? I had no idea they were called that. And then you have these beautiful hostas. It looks like a jungle out there. How funny. And just to let you know, this was dubbed in afterward. Oh my goodness, Home Depot basically has everything. What even are these things? And then there it is. There's the infamous Ballymore. I'm sure all the Home Depot employees know exactly what a Ballymore is. But it's, I don't know why, but the name Ballymore sounds so funny. Look, there's another one of those Ballymores. All the way over here. Look, it's a genuine Ballymore. So this is just, that's just my quick little Home Depot escapade adventures. And even though this isn't a Home Depot shopping channel, I decided to make this video of the beauty that's in here. And there's literally copyrighted music, so I'm just gonna add in my own music afterward. Boy, was that a beautiful adventure. Now back to the video. So we gotta reboot the iPad. So we're just gonna click the reboot button. And then this is where it gets kinda cool. This is when it gets to boot into iOS 5. So it's basically just going to go into the Apple logo like the normal boot process. And then it's just going to get absolutely wild. So let's just rotate the iPad's orientation so you can see what's going on. So if it turns off, that's supposed to be totally normal. Just a, it's just rebooting into the, it's rebooting into the new iOS. So this is the cool part. It's literally going to get into booting iOS 5. So you have to lock, lock your device. And then once you unlock it, it's basically going to go into the verbose boot mode. This is when it gets really cool. So you get the old Apple logo, and then this is like back to an, a hacker from the 1990s with all the verbose text. So I'm hoping to flip the screen, but unfortunately you can't flip it. So I'm just going to somehow get, get it like this without damaging like all my mic cables. Oh, then it's literally going to be loading into iOS. Now this is, it, it does the big progress bar. Oh, then, oh, I heard the old iOS charging sound. This is one, of, this is basically like one of the really cool parts. So now, it's basically a brand new iPad. So I'm just going to put in my passcode. And you, you can just basically continue. Country region. Enable location services. So I'm just going to get onto my Wi-Fi. So you can basically set up, set it up as a new iPad. And I don't know, but my phone just decided to turn on the flash. So looks like we're going to have to use this video with the flash. So we're just going to skip Apple ID setup because I have no. I think the iCloud servers for old iOS are still down. I agree to the iOS terms and conditions. Automatically send diagnostics and usage. Start using the iPad, and this is fully stock iOS five. Living the old days. Let's see how much storage it takes up. 486 megabytes? Oh, that. That's basically one gigabyte. However, there is a way to fully downgrade this thing to iOS 5. You have to do. But, however, you need an Arduino Uno and USB host shield. That'll be a, that'll be a video for another day about tethered downgrades on the iPad 2. So, for now, this is the best way to get an iOS 5 untethered dual boot or downgrade via cool booter so that was a, a quick little answer to one of the questions that one of my viewers had so thank you so much for watching this video please like watch and subscribe and i will see you next time bye y'all